Hey there, Detroit sports fanatics. I'm Taylor Phillips, and welcome to Taylor's Detroit Sports on Spreaker. You can also find this and all other episodes of Taylor's Detroit Sports on iHeartRadio. Straight and full Detroit and Michigan sports coverage 100% of the time. If you have any opinions on everything that's going on in the Detroit sports world, call in or send a text message live on the show at 231-429-3668. Also, you can add me on Facebook as Taylor Phillips online at facebook.com slash taylorgatorphillips14. Like my Facebook page, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports page. Join my Facebook group, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports Group. And follow me on Twitter at DT2Phillips with two L's. Well, it's been two weeks, hasn't it? This is episode 146. On Spreaker, this is Taylor's Detroit Sports. You can call in our text... Live on the show at 231-429-3668. Or you can leave comments here on this episode. I mean, uh... Uh, put my picture up there. All right. I'm going to uh, talk about the Spartans advancing to the Sweet 16. Red Wings not generating enough enough, uh, offense. Uh, But but still coming off a win. They are they are in third place in the Atlantic Division with 89 points. Pistons winning three of four, proving why they don't need a high lottery draft pick. A top lottery draft pick, that is. Plus, I'll talk about some Tigers spring training news, uh, and them not winning their games, although they don't count. And I'll talk some Griffin. Grand Rapids Griffins hockey as well. The AHL affiliate of the Red Wings. I'm not sure. Um, on my page and then on my group. All right, let's start let's start with the first time. Spartans beat the Georgia Bulldogs 70 to 63 in the second round. The round of 64 on Friday, and then they beat the they upset the Virginia Cavaliers 60 to 54 in the round of 32 to advance to the Sweet 16. The first half. The uh, game against Georgia, they kept turning the ball over, but um, they held on for for a victory. But then yesterday, they 
turn it. They finally turn it up against the Cavaliers. And the Spartans only uh, turn the ball over five times in the first half. And uh, it was uh, quite a, a game. It was quite a close game the whole the whole way through. And the Spartans uh, didn't didn't even let the Cavaliers uh, come back into the game. Take on the Oklahoma Sooners um, this Friday at about 10. I'm going to check uh, Spartans' uh, schedule on msuspartans.com. It is 10.07 p.m. in in Syracuse, New York. That will be televised on TBS. Very funny. You can, um... Uh, I, uh, the Spartans are favored by, favored by 14 points to win over Oklahoma to advance to the Elite Eight. If they keep limiting their turnovers like they did against the Virginia Cavaliers, they have, they have a shot to uh, advance to the Elite Eight and maybe to the Final Four as well, and maybe further than that. And I think they have plenty of offense, and and their defense uh, has been solid as well. They, I saw them uh, make a few blocks in the second half. I listened to the, to the first half on the radio on the way to Grand Rapids for the Griffins game. I watched the second half at Flow Sports Bar near my cousin Ed Bessemer's house. We'll get to the Grand Rapids Griffins uh, later on in the show, and the Fox Sports Detroit Girls, who I dedicate this episode to. Travis Trice uh, hit a few threes. is their free throw shooting. They, they've missed quite a few and still and still hit up still hit other free throws. And that, that's that's what I saw in the second half. Missed free throws can kill you. But but as long as the Spartans deep as long as the Spartans defense fails them out then the, then the missed free throws don't matter as much. You can also uh, catch all the game, all the MSU games on the Spartan Sports Network. Go to SpartanSportsNetwork.com or download the Spartan Sports Network mobile app on your smartphone. Red Wings now. Their offense isn't in it isn't generating much. Ed 
after the 5-1 win over the Pittsburgh Penguins. Still not a still not enough offense to win a game. They lost to the Florida Panthers 3-1, and, and then they lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning 3-1. Both on back-to-back -back games, both in Flor in the state of Florida. And then Sunday, their offense continued to struggle un until the third period when Eric Cole scored 21, 24 seconds into the third to tie the game at one. Alexander, Alexander Steen with the power play goal for the Blues, St. Louis second period. It was tied at one through three periods and it would need a little, only a little bit of overtime to solve this, and it did. Just an applicator on, on the rebound, even with a broken stick, put the puck in the net with his broken stick. 24 seconds, exactly 24 seconds into the overtime period. And the Red Wings beat the Blues in overtime, 2-1. to one. Pavel Detsuk has missed all three games since the Penguins game in Pittsburgh. He was out with a lower body uh, stiffness injury. Detsu played in the Penguins game. And the Red Wings scored five goals in that game. But, but, but when Detsu was out, the Wings offense lacked. Uh, it lacked energy. They lacked firepower. Plus, the, there were some, there were moments when they uh, made one too many passes and turned the puck over instead of instead of shooting the puck. They continue their four-game homestand tomorrow night against the Arizona Coyotes at 7:30. And then on Thursday, they host the Sharks at 7.30, and then, and then they host the Lightning at 2 o'clock. All of them on, on Fox Sports Detroit. Pavel Datsuk uh, will not play tomorrow night, so the Wings offense will continue to struggle against Mike Smith. May have a shot at a shutout, perhaps. Uh, their their power play is uh, absolutely uh, laboring. As of late. Pavel Datsuk will uh, play on Thursday against the San Jose Sharks. The Wings, the wings offense needs Pavel Datsuk like humans need oxygen. They have 11 games to play remaining on the schedule. Five of them in March, six and the other six in April. The regular season the, the regular season ends April 11th on a Saturday in Carolina at seven. 
against the Hurricanes in Raleigh, North Carolina. Their last home game, Tuesday against the Canes, April 7th at 7.30. Out of the Pistons. They have won three out of their last four after losing ten in a row. And that is that is a sign that um, Pistons really don't need a lottery draft pick. That 10 game losing streak was a, was a costly fluke to their season. Because after starting 5 and 23, they still had a chance to come back and make a playoff run, make a punch their ticket make a run in the playoff, in the NBA playoffs, until Brandon Jennings got that ruptured his Achilles tendon. Which was uh, horrible news received by the Pistons organization. This is a live uh, podcast, just so everyone knows. This is Taylor's Detroit Sports episode 146 on Spreaker and iHeartRadio. I dedicate this to the Fox Sports Detroit girls. Call in or text message live at 231-429-3668. Please give, give me your name, city, and state as you text and as you call as well. I only need your first name. Your last name would be nice too, but first name is more, most important. First name and city and state are most important. Last name is optional. So is the middle name and suffix as well. They beat the Hornets, but the Pistons did, last Tuesday. One oh five. They 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 beat the Memphis Grizzlies. Pardon me. They beat the Memphis Grizzlies one oh five to ninety five. They lost the 76ers in Philadelphia ninety four eighty three. They beat the they beat the Chicago Bulls. 107.91 at the back of the palace on Saturday and, and then last night in Boston they beat the Celtics in overtime 105 to 97 Reggie Jackson the youngest and newest piston acquired in a trade the Oklahoma City Thunder fell just one rebound shy of his second triple-double in three games. He had 22 points, 11 assists, and 9 rebounds. It's unbelievable! Andre Drummond continues to have 20 rebound games because he, he definitely is a rebounding machine. He, he continues to rack up the double doubles as, as well with the points to clear up the other half of the double double story. If they keep winning those games like that, they, they may have a chance to uh, make the playoffs, but if they don't, they could, they could just go ahead and, and wait till Brandon Jennings recovers from his injury for uh, next season. And 
then then they'll be rolling. What, what the real problem was was their def was their lack of defense. They they showed they showed better defense. the Grizzlies, Bulls, and Celtics. Now they, now they, all, they allowed 94 points to the 76ers as well, despite the loss. They only came up with 83. I don't think the Pistons were ready for the Philadelphia for the Philadelphia game. But they were ready for the Celtics game after beating the Bulls. In, uh, they, they take on the Raptors tomorrow night at 7.30 on Fox Sports Detroit. Then they go to Florida for, for two games, play the Orlando Magic on Friday at 7, and the Miami Heat Sunday at 6. Then they're back home for a single game with the Atlanta Hawks next Tuesday at 7.30. Hawks are 53-17. and 17. Pistons are going to have, have to turn it up a notch against them and the Raptors. The Raptors are 42-28. and 28. Then they play the Hornets and Bulls on the road Wednesday, April 1st and, April, and Friday, April 3rd to kick off the month of April. The Hawks game wraps up the month of March. The Magic and Heat are uh, struggling in general. This has just got to keep doing what they're doing as of late. Dallas Hawks and Tigers spring training baseball. Tigers uh, finally won one game after losing uh, uh, probably seven or eight games in a row, including split squad games. They beat the Mets six to four, but then. They also tied the Nationals in a scoreless game last Thursday. They tied the Nationals again 7-7 last Sunday in one of the split squad games yesterday. The other split squad game they lost to the Braves 5-3 in Orlando, Florida at Disney World. The tie with, with the Nationals was at Joker Martin Stadium at home in Lakeland, Florida. Justin Verlander gave up three home runs yesterday against the Nats. A lot of people were bringing up Kate up and then blaming it on her. Verlander giving up three home runs. Man, I, man, I, that is just unbelievable. I mean, Verlander had already gained 20 pounds of muscle. He, he's expected to improve.
Tigers um, sent down Stephen Moyle. Let me look at the uh, Justin Verlander article here. If there is one. Tiger 7, National 7, Miguel Cabrera singles in debut, Justin Verlander surrenders three home runs, headlined by Chris Ian of NLive.com, go to the paragraph here, Verlander, Verlander seemed out of sorts and uncomfortable on the mound throughout his outing while allowing five runs in four and, thir four and one third innings of work. The Nationals scored two runs in the second inning, then led off the third, fourth and fifth innings with home runs. Two of those came off, off the bat of Michael Taylor. Verlander threw six consecutive strikes while, while retiring the side and quarter in the first inning. The final out came on a fly ball to deep left center, the center, Rajay, center fielder Rajay Davis. Center fielder Rajay Davis tracked down. The Nationals had two hits and a walk while rallying for a pair of runs in the second inning. Sandy Leon ripped an RBI double just inside the bag at first base and into right field to make it 1 0. Ian Stewart scored from third base on a fielder's choice later in the inning to make it, to make it 2 0. First baseman Jordan Leonardson fielded the ball on the run. Uh, fielded, uh, first baseman Jordan Leonardson fielded the ball on the run. Score on the run scoring fielder's choice for the Nationals in the second inning, but he touched the bag at first before throwing home. A throw directly home likely would have been in time to get Stewart out and prevent the run from scoring. All the runs that, all the five runs that Verlander gave up were earned. He walked two and struck out two. He threw 79 pitches, 48 for strikes. Verlander got a no decision because it ended, because that game ended in a 7-7 draw stalemate. Joe Nathan surrendered a double that was well struck and a bloop single to start the six. The Nationals then scored a run on a double play grounder that deflected off Nathan's pitching hand to make it 6-2. Nathan remained in the game and retired. Emmanuel Burris on a comebacker to, to end the inning. <laughs> so not G.I. Joe. I heard Saturday afternoon from the Detroit Sports Rag and Jeff Moss that that the Tigers are contemplating releasing unconditionally releasing Joe Nathan And they are not messing around that with their with their bullpen in terms of their bullpen and they and they and they and they say the possibilities are that that's that Joaquin Soria, the relief pitcher, formerly a closing pitcher, would close. Couple other roster projections. Andrew Romine and Hernan Perez could be Detroit could be teammates on opening day. But it doesn't mean that they'll start that they'll both start in the middle infield. Jose Iglesias is still the starting shortstop. Andrew Romine could be the number one second baseman or backup second baseman. So 
or shortstop or whatever. Yeah, Romine could be the... Romine is the backup shortstop. Hernan Perez is likely to be the backup second baseman behind Ian Kinsler. The other, the other roster projection, Kyle Ryan is a strong contender to be the second left-handed in the bullpen for the, for the Tigers. How much time I got left? Victor Martinez uh, in the 5-3 loss to the Braves went hitless in his, de in his Grapefruit League debut. But, he but he's getting warmed up. Check the schedule here. They have off, they had off today. They play the, the Yankees in Tampa Bay at George Steinbrenner Field. At 7.05. Then on Wednesday, they play the Miami Marlins at, at uh, Joker Martin Stadium at 105. Then they play the Orioles at, at home at 1 on Thursday. Then they go to uh, Florida Auto Exchange Stadium and play the Toronto Blue Jays on Friday at 107. Then they head back to, back to Joker Martin Stadium in Lakeland, Florida, play the St. Louis Cardinals on Saturday. And they and then on the 29th they go to Philadelphia and play the Phillies at Brighton in Clearwater, Florida at Bright House Field at 105 to play the Philadelphia Phillies. They open their regular season at home against the Minnesota Twins on April 6th. That is at 108 on a Monday. Now for my favorite moment. The Grand Rapids Griffins. They had lost two in a row. A bad one yesterday afternoon at home at Van Andel Arena to the Adir Adirondack Flames affiliated by the Calgary Flames 4 to 1 I was there with my cousin Ed Bessemer and and what we saw was them making was the Griffins making one too many passes and turning the puck over in their own zone leading to a goal or two for the Flames and uh, the Griffins uh, were, just, were just looking confused out there. The Adirondack Flames uh, defense was pretty dangerous. Their back check was just aggressive. Was, was just so aggressive. Landon Ferraro scored a shorthanded goal. The only goal for GR, for GR, um, but that was it. But what, but outside of the, outside of the game itself, the, 
in the lobby we saw not only the dogs but the Fox Sports Detroit girls Angela and Emily I was the first to see them actually and they gave me a hug right away each one of them they uh, uh, I got my picture taken with them Emily is the newest Fox Sports Detroit girl. She is blonde. As you can see, like you can like the uh, Fox Sports Detroit girls Facebook page. Follow them on Twitter at FS Detroit underscore girls. And follow them on Instagram at Fox Sports Detroit girls. All in one word. I met, I met them again in the first intermission, and then the, I met them again in the second intermission. And um, my cousin Ed uh, got um, got himself a picture taken with them, and then we get, and then we both got our picture got a picture taken with them all in one and um, I, I got uh, at least a, I got about a, I got a group hug from them and then I got I got one one last hug from into one last individual hug from each girl Man, they love me to death, let me tell you. They were gonna, they said they were gonna watch some of the third period and then, and then leave because they were, uh, they didn't want to deal with heavy traffic, with so much traffic. I, I told them to drive safe. I told them they look fabulous as always, and they thanked me. Emily said that was very sweet of me. Angela remembered who I who I actually am. I'm the sports reporter for 107.9 CDY. I told them about the new Detroit Sports 105.1 and its uh, mobile app and its website. I mentioned that to them the talk shows of 105.1. Ryan Enrico, Matt Derry, and Drew Lane, and Mark Fellhauer. They were super nice. I tagged them in my photos on Instagram and Emily's personal Instagram account liked all my photos, and then the Fox Sports Detroit Girls uh, account on Instagram liked all my photos and replied to one of them. It said from Emily, So great to meet you, Taylor. Hope you had fun. E for Emily. I got their autographs and a and a navy blue Fox Sports Detroit hat. So uh, I got I got autographs from all six of the Fox Sports Detroit girls full time, full time Fox Sports Detroit girls of all time. Meg was uh, the only part time Fox Sports Detroit girl for only for it, what for April the D April and the D one year just for one month I finally met recall I recall I finally met uh, Allison Akhmatik uh, on September 6th at the Saginaw Ultimate Tailgate Party 
when she was with Lauren and Angela. Last year, Yeah, I'm a lucky guy. I'm I'm a Fox Sports Detroit girl fa fanatic. Those are all beautiful women. You, you all should check them out. They love their sports. L Lauren was is uh, still the only Fox Sports Detroit girl to be a Michigan Wolverine fan. The rest of them are Michigan State Spartans fans. Kind of weird, but hey, uh, better than six against nothing, huh? I like both Michigan and Michigan State evenly, but I like but I like my Central Michigan Chippewas. Fire up chips. They deserve to. Uh, their men's basketball team deserved to uh, have an NCAA tournament berth, but they, then again, they didn't earn it. They only played Buffalo. Buffalo was the only uh, NCAA tournament field team the Chips played this past season. They beat them once, but then they lost to the Bulls at the Buffalo Bulls in the MAC tournament championship game. 89-84. So, the Bulls earned that Mac, the Mac championship and the NCAA tournament berth. Chips didn't. But glad I met the glad I met Angela and Emily, the Fox Sports Detroit girls. Once again, I thank them for it. I still can't get get them out of my head. They're just stunningly beautiful. They're hot as well. Okay, I've had my fun. I think we can close the logo now. That's going to do it for Taylor's Detroit Sports episode 146. I dedicated this one, this episode to the Fox Sports Detroit girls, which I, who I met yesterday at the Griffins game. I, I hope they listened. And I hope all you listen and download it. And if you did, I thank you all for that. I'll talk to you next time on episode 147. TTFN, ta-ta for now.